The year is 2020. This is a world with superpowers, but one in which they've only begun appearing within the last 15 years or so. Scientists have been baffled enough as it is. But what's even stranger, the only people who seem to get these superpowers are either pop idols or those who are working to become them. Naturally, when it became clear who was getting these superpowers, there was a huge uptick in the number of people trying to make it as performers. Because of this, the entertainment world is now immensely crowded. The biggest labels now all cater to these flashy, super-powered performers, commonly known as super idols. Our story takes place in the city of Cadence, British Columbia, Canada. The world's first super idol-centric music label, Starforge Records, was founded in Cadence, making the city an unexpected hotspot for the music and entertainment industry. The city also boasts something even more exciting. Starview Academy, a prestigious performing arts school for super idols. Anyone who wants to be anyone dreams of going to Starview. They boast top-of-the-line training and facilities, a wealth of industry connections, and exclusive recording contracts with Starforge Records for their top performers. Even the school's middle-of-the-road students tend to go on to pretty cushy careers after graduating. Yes, Starview Academy is a beacon of excellence whose idols are cheered on by all of Cadence. Sadly, our heroes do not go to Starview Academy. We find ourselves in a public high school on the outskirts of the city called Fort McNally High. The place is a little run down and underfunded, and it sits in the shadow of a fancier private school a few blocks away called Fort MacArthur. Even the Fort McNally Idol Club, which you'd think would be a big deal after the advent of super idols, is tiny and barely holding itself together. The students and staff do their best. I mean, they have a decent curling team, at least. But it's tough going for any students wanting to break out as idols. But for those idol hopefuls who won't let a tough road ahead stop them, the first step to achieving their dreams will be to join the McNally Idol Club. Because anyone in a formally recognized school idol club is qualified to participate in the annual Cadence Idol Newcomer Grand Star Tournament, or Sing Star Tournament for short, which offers an amazing top prize. A full ride to Starview Academy for all members of the winning team. Oh, but there are a couple of complications. Being a super idol means more than just singing, dancing, and wearing cute outfits. Super idols compete with each other on a whole other level. Flashy super concerts are a big deal in this world, and that includes the high school circuit. The winner in a contest of super idols isn't just whoever has the best songs or the biggest crowd appeal, although that certainly helps. It's also whoever can withstand a psionic blast, or light their opponent's hair on fire, or summon a horde of locusts to act as backup dancers. You know, standard stuff. Plus, guess what? Some people want to be idols and also do crimes, so you may need to fight the occasional supervillain along your path to fame and glory. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting school year. All that out of the way. Uh, I suppose I should introduce myself. My name is Aaron. I will be your GM for the session, and I'm bringing you into the world of Fort McNally High School. It is 
currently the second day of school, early September 2020, and we find ourselves towards the end of the school day. Classes are wrapping up. It's been mostly orientations and all that getting the school year started stuff. Not much actual learning happening so far. And we float into the classrooms to get a look at our protagonists, starting with... My name is Dana Lexa, she, her pronouns, and I will be playing Valerie Pierce, a grade 10 student at Fort McNally High. She's a trans girl, about medium height, and she has black hair and a short bob that falls over her right eye. She dresses like a pretty standard high school goth. Lots of black and mesh t-shirts, jean shorts over fishnets, dark makeup, the whole deal. Valerie's always wanted to be rich and famous, to be adored, to have other people envy her like she envies other idols. However, despite her best efforts to become an idol herself, she never managed to gain any powers. That is, until this past summer. There had always been rumors about Rain Shadow Records, that their contracts were some of the most draconian in the business, that their top idol, Mary Rain, was a nightmare to work with, that some of their connections and funding sources were shady, to put it lightly. But the biggest rumor about them? was that somehow they could just give idols superpowers. Desperate for powers and a foot in the door, Valerie recently chased down this rumor and found herself in a meeting with the executives at Rain Shadow Records. By the end of that meeting, Valerie agreed to sign with the label and received a set of powers from Mary Rain herself. Shape-shifting, telekinesis, psychic constructs. It was more than she could ever have imagined. Valerie was overjoyed. However, Turned out, the other rumors about Rain Shadow were true as well. Valerie's idol persona, the gothic Lolita-styled Violence Violet, or Vivi for short, is now the legal intellectual property of Rain Shadow Records, Inc. Any use of the Violence Violet image or name not approved of by the label can result in serious repercussions for Valerie, up to and including being stripped of her powers and blacklisted from the industry for life. If she doesn't sing and dance to exactly the tune Rain Shadow wants, Valerie's career as an idol is doomed. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so yes, we, we enter into Valerie's classroom. What do you think the first couple of days have been like for Valerie as she's started her grade 10 year? So partly spurred on by the sort of confidence of getting this contract, she has uh, completely changed her look and taken a new like uh, even the name Valerie is new for her and so people are treating her like she's a new student and she's just sort of dodging questions about that even though she was technically at uh, Fort McNally High last year and so it's sort of uh, the first time that she's tried to act with confidence and act like people should just know her because she's cool and and people should you know, want to talk to her, but she's too good for them anyway. And it's this is a very good idol uh, attitude to have. <laughs> yeah, it, it's you know, it's fun, but it actually takes more work to keep up that persona than than she expected. Indeed. Uh so has do you think she's made any like friend connections or anything so far, or it's still too early for that? Just kind of hanging out by herself, or I think she's still hanging out by herself. I think she's probably not quite confident. She's she's gotten the pretending that she's too good to talk to you down. She hasn't quite gotten the actually talking to people down just yet. I think that's fair. It's it's only day two, so there's still plenty of time to meet people and mingle. Especially since you saw an interesting flyer on the bulletin board on your way into the first and second day of school. It is a flyer done on pink paper and glitter that says... Fort McNally Idol Club! Triple exclamation mark. Now seeking new members and a new president. Show the world what you've got and shine like you never have before! Double exclamation mark. First meeting, Tuesday at 4 p.m., room 346. It is currently Tuesday, and it's about 3.30ish, mm, so you're just wrapping up for the day. Are you going to head straight there, or do you have any business to take care of before you head there, do you think? Uh, I think I'm going to sort of go to the hallway and spend a little bit of time like standing in the hallway looking you know looking uh busy and like i'm not paying attention but just to see if anyone else goes in before me oh yeah the the nonchalant like oh you i don't i don't, I don't know about you you're going to the school yeah um, I, I don't know about me <laughs> 
is what a yeah, absolutely. I'm not I'm not interested at all, but who else is here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright. Um uh, I think T, do you think your character is anywhere nearby at this point, or do you think she's doing something else at the moment? Um, I feel like she's already and sorry, I wasn't facing the mic when I was talking. Okay. Um, I'll do that again. Uh, I think she's already in there. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna lead in, assuming that you're in there. Maybe, uh, maybe Valerie, you, you're trying to make it look like you're not like trying to be near the room or see inside, but you you get a little little peek through the window, and you see in the room among the people who are in there, we have. My name is T. They them pronouns, and I will be playing Evangeline Blake or Angie to her friends. She's a very tall and twiggy girl with some muscle definition from years of dance training. She has long blonde hair, often done up in a ponytail, and wears a lot of very fashionable dresses. Or, well, they were fashionable anyway. For most of her life, Angie's parents were wealthy business people in Cadence. They made more than enough money to keep their little girl in all the Gucci and Versace she wanted, and they paid for all her very, very expensive dance lessons. Ballet, tango, hip-hop, swing, she's done it all and more. And with the discovery of her powers, super strength, and minor fireworks effects, Angie was set to transfer to Starview Academy and begin her illustrious career as a dance idol. And then her parents had to go and screw it all up by getting caught. As it turns out, Mr. and Mrs. Blake had been embezzling money from their employers for many, many years. And the employers did not take kindly to that. They took the Blakes to court, sued them for literally all they were worth, and left the family with almost nothing. Great. Just. Great. Needless to say, Angie hasn't been thrilled with all this, but all things considered, she has made the best of things. After her first year of public school at Fort McNally, she developed a little clique with some of the school's other most popular girls, with herself at the center. She may be wearing last season's Gucci, but hey, it's better than what everyone else is wearing, right? Anyway, last year, Angie tried joining the Fort McNally Dance Club and found them wanting, let's say. She tried to develop her idol persona, basically just a flashier version of herself called Bane Raven, but unfortunately, practice sessions were inconsistent thanks to other members being flaky and not taking the club seriously. Now, as she heads to grade 11, Angie has decided to give the idol club a try. It's a long shot, but who knows? Maybe this will be the thing that lets her burst the Blake family name back into relevancy like a bull charging through the fence of temporary financial hardship and into the wide open pastures of fuck you, I'm rich again. <laughs> very good. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so yes, you know exactly what's up. You know exactly what you want and you are already in the room ready to do what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Um also, do you think uh do you think you've been aware of Valerie in the past couple of days like I know that you're one to notice someone whose fashion sense does not click with yours yeah um that would have been the first thing that uh tipped me off I think was the fashion but uh I probably initially expected it to be like a ew you're gonna wear that um but also there's a little bit of envy because she <laughs> does look really cool <laughs> But uh, she doesn't tell that to anybody else. So um, a lot of it at first she thinks is for some reason she just rationalizes it that uh, that uh, Violet's going to kind of fade into the background. But uh, obviously that doesn't happen. Everybody's wondering about her and where she came from and all this stuff. And she's at the stage, I think, where she's like, I don't get what's so special and is essentially trying to ignore this really obvious figure in the, in the high school community that uh, everyone else is talking about. <laughs> um, this is probably a good way to segue into the fact that uh, you consider Valerie your rival, <laughs> like mechanical rival yeah. on the on the Bulls character sheet. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I said Violet, but I did mean That's Valerie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> I did the stage name. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, so yes, <laughs> try as you might to rationalize away someone who clearly has inferior fashion sense, you cannot help but 
think, God, she's so fucking cool. She and is. You want I'm to do, you want to, about it. To best her in any way possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty. So before we move into what you see in this room, because there are other people in the room with you as well, um, I'm going to move to the last member of our cast. Uh, Michelle, where do you think your character is at this point in the day? Well, she's new, so she's wandering the halls. And I think she's going to see a sparkly poster that might catch her eye. Alrighty. We follow an unassuming looking girl down the hallway up to the bulletin board where the flyer is. And this person just happens to be... So my name is Michelle. They, them pronouns. I'll be playing Cynthia Knight. She's a 15-year-old, about 5'9", with an athletic body type, brown hair just above her shoulders, and gray-blue eyes with glasses. Um, She wears mostly plain, casual clothing. She's a grade 10 transfer student, new this year, and she transferred from somewhere no one's quite sure. She's a bit vague on the details when people ask. And that's all you're getting for right now. (laughs) (laughs) What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's um, there's more than one mysterious student that people are interested in. I think uh, just by, again, virtue of fashion sense, Valerie stands out a little more. But there is Cynthia as well, who's no it, people are interested in. But because she doesn't stand out quite as much, they're not pushing quite as hard for the details. But they are curious still. <laughs> So you've had to face a few questions throughout the past couple of days, but you've been pretty good at keeping your cards close to the chest. Yeah. Um, even though she's new, the track club keeps asking her to join. Because <laughs> you're very <laughs> obviously fit. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, she's she's quiet and she keeps to herself a lot. That makes sense. Uh, so for now, your mysterious brown-haired character... <laughs> is passing through the hallway, sees the flyer. Do you think she's going to go straight there, or does she have anything else she wants to do beforehand? Um, no, I think it catches her eye. You know, she likes bright pink things, even though she looks pretty casual and very athletic. It's it's not like I like cute, frilly things, Baka. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm going to assume you're heading there. Uh, so you head down the, down a couple hallways and find yourself... In the in the three hundreds, by the way, the way this school is laid out, there's rooms with multiple like different types of numbers, like one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, but it's all on one floor. This is just to make the school seem bigger than it actually is. Okay. <laughs> so you find yourself near room three four six, and you see uh, you see Valerie hanging outside the room. Do you? What do you do? I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye out, and see what everyone's doing. I'm a loner. So you have two two <laughs> people trying to pretend like they're they're not interested in the room, clearly hanging outside the room. <laughs> Valerie, do you react to this in any way? Uh, I think I sort of pretend not to notice, but if uh, if if Cynthia is not going to acknowledge that for a little bit, I'll I'll actually engage. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, so you heard about that? Um, you know the Idol Club. Yeah, I saw the flyer. I'm interested in checking it out. Are you in the club? No, no. I, I thought um, maybe I'd, I'd check it out. You know, it seems like uh, they could probably use more members. You know, flyers seem pretty, pretty desperate. So I. Yeah. Do you want to check it out together? Um. Yeah, I'm sure if you're if you're going in, I guess I may as well too. Yeah. Sure. Let's check it out. All right. So you both head into the room together, where you see. Uh, where you see Evangeline and you see uh, you see a couple other people, not ev- not a whole lot of people, maybe like one or two other people so far. There may be like one or two other people who are also coming in behind you as well. The the people in the room, by the way, already are you have like one girl who's just kind of like dirty blonde, has like a school pride T-shirt, looks just kind of chipper and happy to be there. Um, and another girl who looks kind of perpetually tired and has kind of long, stringy <laughs> black hair, uh, kind of bags under her eyes, and like an open front Hawaiian t-shirt and cargo shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so I think before um, before Valerie and Cynthia walked in, I feel like Evangeline was probably angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
because uh, <laughs> that uh, that wasn't what she was hoping for. Like, she was probably hoping for cheerleaders or maybe somebody she could mold into, you know, an idol because she's already proclaimed herself as the leader of this group, <laughs> even though... She might not be, but it's up to her because this is her dream. Well, supposedly the club is looking for a new president. That's what the flyer <laughs> said anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So she would have saw that and she was already like calling the shots. <laughs> so like as if she's running this and it's the audition, even though she saw the flyer too. And she that's why she came to the room. <laughs> do you think you've already tried to like tell some people what to do? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so I definitely paint, would have paint done me that. a word picture of what this scene what the scene that Valerie <sighs> and uh Cynthia walk in on is then. Okay, well, I'm holding a clipboard. Who knows where I got it, but I have it now and I've got a and I've got a pen and I'm wearing um probably like Chanel sports from 2 years ago uh that somehow still fit because I don't know. But uh yeah. Some kind of Chanel sports line from a couple seasons ago. Yeah, seasons, not years, seasons. And she's got a clipboard and one of these really glittery, sparkly pens with like the pom pom on the end, you know? Yeah, of course. You know, every high school girl has to have one of those pens, especially it's a status symbol. So. It's a requirement for being a prep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, very popular in the Clueless movie, from what I recall. <laughs> I think every one of them still had popular one of those in the in the year the of our Lord twenty twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's got this. Uh, she's got this clipboard, and it's like a short sweater combo, and she's taking everybody's names. Um, all yep. two of them. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, she's, like, grilling them on their dance history, like, their singing ability and stuff like that. And I'm not sure how the characters are reacting, <laughs> but it's clear she's hoping for some kind of hidden gem that's going to help her come to the top. All right. Well, I think I can tell you kind of what reactions you're getting. Um, from the from the blonde girl, I think you're getting pretty pretty good rapport with the blonde girl, at least. Like I said, she's pretty psyched to be here. She's following your lead pretty easily. She, um, she says her name is Emily, uh, and she doesn't have any, like, dance history or background, but she, like, has run track before. She, like, <laughs> knows how to be active, at least. Um, okay. And she's just kind of excited. She She's excited by the idea of super idols and hopes that she can get some powers if she doesn't have them already. Okay. And the other girl, <laughs> you have a little more trouble with. <laughs> um, yeah, so okay. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say you managed to get her first name out of her. She says her name is Karen. Um but it, ask me a couple of questions, why don't you? Okay. Um Karen, have you ever danced before? Hmm. Dancing's nice, isn't it? Yeah, have you done it? <laughs> Who can say in this world, you know? Man. <laughs> Okay, next question. Um, any singing ability? I believe anyone can sing if they try. <sighs> she just <laughs> write something down. <laughs> so, Valerie and Cynthia, this is the scene that you walk in on. There's a couple more people who are who are entering with you. There's another girl and a guy who are coming in as well. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to assume that Evangeline is the uh, current president now, since she's doing this. So I'm going to go over and introduce myself. Hi. Oh, hi. She sticks out her hand to uh, for you to shake. I'll uh, shake her hand. My name is Cynthia, and I would like to join the Idol Club. Oh my god, that's great. Uh, have you ever danced before? Uh, not so much dancing, but I do like singing. Awesome. Like, you can see, like, uh, this, I don't know, light bulb go off, so to speak, just in her facial expression. And she's, like, writing significantly more behind her notepad and, or behind her uh, clipboard. And you're not really sure what her writing, what, what she's writing, but she keeps looking up at you and then down to write some more. I'm just kind of watching her in awe because she's writing so much and I have no idea what she's writing. <laughs> 
Yeah, and uh, she's going to be like, great, we're so happy to have you. Go and take a seat. Okay, and I'll go sit down. Just kind of look around at everyone. Uh, yeah, hey, um, I saw there was the ad, and, um, you know, it seems like, uh, I mean, I've got my own thing going, but I guess it seems like you need uh, members, so thought I'd see if this was uh, worth my time. I'm, uh, I'm Valerie. Uh, nice to meet you, Valerie. My name is Evangeline. Uh, my friends call me Angie. Mm -hmm. And she also, like, reluctantly goes out to shake your hand, but it's in a way, um, that she's a little intimidated. Valerie shakes her hand, but, like, with the same hesitation, and it, it definitely is just a little more awkward than either of them would have intended separately. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen's, Karen in the background says, Mm, you're gonna be good friends. I get, I get the feeling. I just know it. Aww. <laughs> you know she has a good attitude. <laughs> yeah. So is this what's this uh, uh, tryouts? I saw saw the uh, you know the club president spot is open. So figured I could uh, you know take make sure that uh, everything everything's up to snuff. I've got some some experience. So that uh, I mean, like if you're really busy. You know, I I could just do it. Oh, so you're not you're you're not the the present. You just you just showed up here, like us. Uh, yeah. And they just had this clipboard here, and well, no one else was doing anything. So, <laughs> actually, here I am. Um, you 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 look at the at the clipboard, and you notice something you didn't see before. This is not actually a sign up sheet for the uh for the idol club. This is just like an attendance sheet for whatever class normally goes on in this room. That I just, like, wrote all over. <laughs> um, but yes, there there are a few people in this room so far, but so far, nobody has uh, spoken up to claim to be the one who set this up yet. Okay, that's... Um, so does anybody know where or uh, um, who the organizer is of the club? And em Emily pipes up like, um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't know really much about the Idol Club before this, uh, but I, I, I just assumed someone would be. I thought it was you. Like, you're not it. Well, I just saw the clipboard and I, you know, since nobody else was volunteering. Is, are they, are they just trying to let us do our own thing? Like, that seems weird. There should be like a, like a guidance, guiding, guidance person, whatever you call it. I, I don't know. Hey, okay. guys. Coach a, or a or, or like sponsor. a TA? I don't know. Is that's a thing, right? Is that I don't I don't think that's a thing in high school. <laughs> uh, and the, the one of the other people who came in behind you, she's a girl with like a dark hair and a short ponytail, kind of like an oversized sweater and jeans. Um, uh, pipes up and is like, if nobody here is actually in charge, I don't know if I'm gonna stick around for this. This seems like a dog and pony show, from what I can see. <laughs> Oh, it's totally fine. I am, I'm in charge. It's me. I've got the clipboard. <laughs> Says who? You clearly just said that you are not actually the person who organized this. I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that clipboard ha is, is for the club that, uh, that, that says his history of the Americas at the top. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is. I feel like you're trying to make a move of some sort, and I'm just trying to think what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like how how exactly she would react to this. <laughs> yeah, does, situation. does anybody want to assess the situation? Actually, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll assess the situation. Sure. So we can do our first roll of the game. Hooray! So you're gonna roll with plus superior on that. Okay. And since this is our first roll of the, this is our first roll of the game, I'll explain the the moves as we make them for assess the situation. It's what you sa what it sounds like. It's basically looking at what you see or sense around you and making some kind of sense of it that will help you in your current situation. Okay, I rolled and I got a nine according to the. Alrighty, so and that's including your superior. So on a seven to nine. Uh, you're not a team yet, so I'm actually not going to allow you guys to use team points just yet. <laughs> um, so on a seven to nine, you get to ask one from the following list. What here can I use to blank, whatever you want to do? Uh, what is the biggest threat? 
not really in the not really appropriate for the situation nor is what is the greatest date what here is in the greatest danger um who here is most vulnerable to me that could be interesting <laughs> and how could we best end this quickly <laughs> um i want to ask the the first question like uh what can i best use to i guess find some way to give myself a little more legitimacy in this situation <laughs> all right so on on the same desk where you found the clipboard uh, you spot a piece of paper that you didn't notice before but you notice it seems to be handwritten uh, so you might want to have a look at that okay i uh i um put up my index finger like and whisper one second and then i go and i look at the, <laughs> at the paper and i look up at everyone while i like slowly slide the paper to my clipboard and clip it on and then start right, reading are it. you are you just gonna read it out loud without reading it beforehand no, I'm gonna read it beforehand before All I right, read it out. So loud. I'll I'll read it to you oh. then. So So the piece of paper reads Hello in all capital letters uh, to all you new Idol Club hopefuls squiggly mark exclamation mark. Surprise! Did you think finding the meeting spot would be easy? You know how protective idols are about their identities. It'd be pretty silly to let anyone and everyone know where we meet. That'd be like a total paparazzi nightmare double exclamation mark. So I set up a little game for everyone to play. Think of it like an initiation, lol lol, triple exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all handwritten, by the way. <laughs> if, you can, if you can find the real meeting spot, that totally must mean you're serious about this and are ready to commit to the club. I've hidden three puzzle pieces around the school that will reveal our meeting location. On the back of this paper are some clues to help you find them. Good luck, idol hopefuls. Looking forward to meeting you all soon. Triple exclamation mark. Squiggly mark. Amberly S. Fort McNally Idol Club President. So what do you do with this piece of paper? <laughs> um, I read it out loud to everyone, but not nearly as enthusiastically. <laughs> and uh, getting, I don't know, like progressively angrier as it goes on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but, uh, and I especially, like, grit out the words idol club president <laughs> at the, at the end of the letter <laughs> mm -hmm. with, uh, just an additional bit of venom. <laughs> and after, after an awkward silence, uh, Karen pipes <laughs> up and goes, huh. And that's all she says. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up and walk over and take a look at the paper. I just, like, hand you the clipboard <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so the others in the room are, are starting to, like, huddle all around you so they can see the paper as well. Um, as, as the paper said, there is stuff on the other side, so if you flip it over, you can see a list of clues. So the clues on the back of the sheet read... 1. Being an idol is all about giving a good performance. You don't want to settle for second place or a B+. Plus. You should always give it your best. Number two, being an idol is also about having fun with others. Like the best sports, no one should hog the ball or spotlight all to themselves. And number three, and remember, on the road to becoming an idol, it's always okay to ask for help. So this is what you have to work with. These are our clues? Okay. <clears throat> So I feel like we're all in a semicircle looking <laughs> over the clipboard. Right. I assume. So these all yes. supposedly yeah. lead to one of three puzzle pieces. Is that say? Is, is that Seattle? Se Seattle. <laughs> Se I read it Seattle? as Seattle. It if looked it, like Seattle. Let's go to Seattle, guys. If it helps, the the words S E A T are like bolded slightly, like they like they've scribbled them in really hard in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Seatle. Is that a word? Is that is seats? It... I feel we're like we're losing focus. <laughs> I feel like every room in the school would have seats in it. Is there? I don't know. Like storage for the seats. Well, what if it's the gym, or maybe like an? I don't know. Um, it says a, a road. Like, does, um, sorry, out of character. Does the school have a? track and field uh, area? Yeah, I, I'd imagine it's sort of in that sort of upper right blank area. I should probably add that to the map. <laughs> sort of, like, above where the gym is. 
Yeah, yeah. So maybe we, why don't we try the gym mm. and uh, mm -hmm. the track and field area? Because it seems, this all seems very, very sports related. And, and Emily chimes in, yeah, one of the clues is about sports. I know sports. We can look at sports, right? I, I'm not uh, sure what I'm doing with this character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems that seems like a good idea. All, let's go to the gym. Let's totally go to the gym. All right. So your your little gaggle of friends or whatever you all are at the moment uh, starts to move out of room three four six and down the hall to where the gym is. Um, on the way, the one guy who showed up, who's just been like standing there looking awkward the whole time, um, he kind of like sheepishly peels off from the group on the way because uh, you kind of from the way he was like looking at people kind of got the vibe that he was just there to meet girls and now it's in this weird scavenger hunt thing and he's a little weirded out so he's oh. gonna leave and no one's paying him attention yeah, i feel like we oh. didn't notice him the whole time <laughs> <laughs> uh actually once once the group leaves the room valerie is going to peel off as well and head toward the auditorium and hope try not to be noticed doing Ooh, that sure <laughs> Are we splitting the party already? Oh, geez. No, actually, I like it. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Listen, the, the idle world is harsh, and you need to sometimes try to get ahead of others. <laughs> it's cutthroat. It is. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I would say, I don't know, like, if there's any, like, notice thing that we have to do, but I feel like I would probably be the one power walking in front and leading everybody to the gym. So I probably wouldn't have noticed until we got to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess, uh, I guess, who would, who do we want to go with first? I guess we, since we, we mentioned the gym first, let's go with the gym crew first and we'll, we'll come back to where Valerie is. We'll assume Valerie was kind of near the back of the group and, uh, since our, Whoever friend peeled off sort of from the back as well, you were able to sort of peel off with him without being noticed yet, anyway. Mm-hmm. He, he probably, like, looked hopeful for a moment, and then I turned in a different direction. <laughs> and, he, and his sh shoulders shrug a bit, like, oh. <laughs> and he wanders off to, like, I don't know, the study hall or something. Or just goes home. It's after school. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so your group is, is heading towards the gym. Um, so on the way, the girl who was a bit snippy with you, the girl with the, the dark ponytail, sort of sidles up towards you, Angie, um, and is like, are, are you serious? Are we, really, are we really doing this? This seems silly. Why don't we just, like, go somewhere and practice? This is very, very off topic for what we should be doing right now. I agree, but I'm also a bit curious about where she's going with this. So let's see how it plays out. All right. I don't think I I don't think I introduced myself by the way. I'm Diana. So you all head into the gym. It's what you'd expect for for a gym in a smaller school. It's like it's, it's not very well. It's not very big. Um, it's not very well maintained. Like the floor is not quite as shiny as it could be. There's maybe like a couple boards that are cracked. Um, <laughs> Feels like nobody's really dusted in a lot of the places around for a while. Um, but you do see towards the uh, back of the gym, there are a few doors where uh, the equipment storage is. There's a few doors leading out to the side where the track and field are. Uh, there's bleachers um, and there's a, there's a couple people who are uh, playing around with the basketball hoops, but they're they're not really doing a whole lot at the moment. Like. It's still pretty early in the school year. The basketball team slash club hasn't really fully gotten going yet. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I just burst in there and put my hands on my hips and do like that kind of pseudo superhero <laughs> pose. And I just start assessing the room. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're assessing again? Uh, yeah. Uh, roll superior. Ooh. You guys know where? You, ass you assess the hell wow. out of this gymnasium. <laughs> Yeah. So you got a 13. <laughs> so on a 10 plus with assess the situation, you get to ask two questions and take plus one while acting on the answers. Okay. Is there anything that stands out about the guys playing basketball? By just basically shooting hoops with each other. They're, they don't seem to be playing like a, a structured game of any sort. They're just having fun. <laughs> Hanging out. Okay. What kind of bleachers are the... Uh are in the room are they the kind that kind of like the old school ones that you kind of have to pull yeah, out yeah exactly those kind of bleachers yeah 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 okay sorry i'm trying to picture the i'm not really sure what to 
ask. Uh, probably most appropriate would be would be how can we best end this quickly, which is how can we best find the clue quickly. <laughs> like what what here can I use to find the clue? Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. How about how best can I end this quickly? Would be my first question. <laughs> All right, so you're you're surveying the gym. You're you're looking around and and you see. You know that the, the clue mentions hogging the ball, so you're looking at the guys playing basketball and thinking, oh, maybe we could go over to them. Um, but then your eye goes over to equipment storage, and you, you have a, a thought, I bet there's a bunch of balls in there. <laughs> <laughs> so before you go uh, interacting with people that, unless you have to, uh, you think, oh, maybe I should try the storage first. Okay. Um... I guess, can I hold the second question, or do I have to have both of them uh, now? No, you, you, can hold the, you can hold the second one. You could use it for, like, a future, like, clue that you're working on. Since they both sort of accomplish the yeah. same ends anyway. Well, for the... Yeah, mostly I just want to um, go to the equipment storage and see what's in there, and then I'll probably inform right. my next question. Yeah. So, yeah, I point ahead, and I go, over there... And then I start <laughs> power walking. And I'm wearing heels. They clack so very like, loudly on the gym Really floor. audibly. <laughs> yeah, it's very audible. <laughs> so you head to the equipment storage room and you find it's unlocked, which seems like a probably not the best choice, but who knows, maybe they lost the key to the room a while ago. It could happen with this school. <laughs> so the room is the room is open. You you open the door with no trouble, and indeed you see pretty much what you'd expect to see in a sports equipment storage room. There's a whole bunch of different types of balls for different types of sports. You've got your baseballs, basketballs, medicine balls, because there are always medicine balls in schools. Hockey sticks and tennis rackets and badminton rackets and I don't know, all that stuff. Uh, and that's nothing else really stands out. Uh, it's, it's it's fairly lock standard sports equipment room. Okay, I guess uh, um, I walk further in and I'll just be like, let's just look at the balls i guess <laughs> and just pick one up and right. see if there's anything that stands out about any mm -hmm. any of the balls and this probably is a good place to use your second question to figure out like what's a <laughs> yeah what ball would best hide a clue <laughs> yeah i guess um most sports i guess it wouldn't be we wouldn't be looking for a dodgeball because dodgeball hits other people we don't normally share those balls. Um, yeah, I guess, um, does anything about the um, going with the balls thing, so is there anything about the balls that stand out in any way? Like either uh -huh. visually or... I'm going to say... Um... I'm going I'm to say this is the result of your second question. This is your second brainwave for this. Um, there's, there's something else in the clue that you're, you're, you're sort of looking at the looking at everything in the room and puzzling over like is there some other like indicator in this and then you think wait no no it can't be that right and you think if it says hog the ball another word for hog is pig and another pig term for a foot football. football is a pig skin <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you decide to look at the at the footballs yeah yeah, um, I'm going to say, search the footballs, but I shout it for some reason, and then I walk over <laughs> there. Emily jumps and, and, and like acts on your orders like, ah, <laughs> like you scared her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we search the footballs, pigskins. Uh, and <laughs> Cynthia, you're just sort of following along with this, or is there anything else that you're doing in the room or in the gym? or? Yeah, I've been um, casually walking along with everything. So I'll just stroll over and pick one up and look at it. Alrighty. And by sheer luck, Cynthia happens to find a football <laughs> with a piece of paper <laughs> taped on the underside. Oh, what does it say? Um, It's more like, what does it look like? It doesn't have any words on it, but it does look like part of a picture that somebody printed out on like an inkjet, inkjet printer. It looks like... <laughs> it looks like... Half of the Fort McNally school building. Okay, I'll just say, found it and hold it up for everyone to see. Da -na -na -na. Yeah, so I, I guess I walk over there with everyone and I look at it and I'm a little unimpressed that this, this is the clue, but also I'm not surprised. <laughs> so I'm, I just say, this really? And then I sigh. 
Um, where should we go next? And then I, I I'm, I'm going to say I've been holding the clipboard this whole time, <laughs> and uh, so that we can look at the clues. All right, and and it in a in a delayed fashion, um, Karen like slowly raises her arms up in kind of a limp fashion and goes, "Woohoo! You did it!" <laughs> so I'll take the clue off the ball and hand it to Evangeline. I'll uh, clip it. <laughs> All right, and before <laughs> before we move on with this, let's let's go back to Valerie and her little sidebar to the auditorium. Uh, yeah, I just sort of like casually break away, and then uh, if no one else is in the next hallway, I enter. I sprint to the auditorium to try to get there as quickly as I can. All right. So as you turn off down the hallway, away from Mister, probably a creepazoid, whoever he was. Uh, you head down towards the auditorium, and you enter the auditorium, and it is, it's an auditorium, it's a school auditorium, it has, it has a stage, it has curtains, there's a, there is a seating area, there's a storage space near the back, uh, there's a tech area where people can control, like, the lights and sound and everything for shows, otherwise it's an empty auditorium, so you are free to do what, what thou wilt in here. <laughs> okay, um... Because the clue mentioned seating or, or the, you know, seat, I'm going to start walking up and down the aisles looking at the seats to see if I can find any kind of clue or anything hidden on or under them. Alrighty. So, uh, actually, as you're, as you're going up and down the rows, uh, your phone, you have your phone on you, right? Yes. Your phone starts going off, actually. It starts buzzing or ringing, whatever you have it set to. Uh, look at the the incoming number. It is a contact you're you're starting to know very well at this point. It is uh, Grace, your assistant at Rain Shadow Records. I definitely answer right away. <laughs> uh, I'd say uh, yes. The, this is Valerie. Hi, hi, Valerie. It's Grace. Um, I'm I'm just calling to let you know. That your dance lessons this Saturday have been moved from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Mary, um, she needs the studio for some extra time that day, and, uh, well, you know how Mary is. Uh, okay, I, mm. uh, Yeah, and they sigh with you. <laughs> this has happened a few times in the summer leading up to this. Yeah, okay, I'll, I, I should be fine, I'll probably have to reschedule some other things but oh no yeah uh, i was hoping it wouldn't mess up your schedule as i know and you're just starting the idol club right too right oh, i'm s i don't yeah, want to mess with that i i know that's going to be part of your whole I thing don't even, i don't even know if it is we've got some kind of weird like puzzle scavenger hunt i don't this A is what? i i don't know that does sound strange are they are you? Tr are they trying to do a bit? Is this like a, like a theme that they're trying to pull with their group, like a puzzle themed idol group? Is that a thing? I don't know. I just we got clues leading to different parts of the school, and I like no one. There's one, one girl here who acted like she was the president, and she has no idea what's going on. <laughs> don't we know that story? And they chuckle like. <laughs> Uh, and then they, they make us sound like, oh, they're checking to make sure that mm -hmm. no one can hear them. <laughs> anyway, um, can you, yeah, anyway, sorry, uh, sorry again about this. I really hope this works out, but this is really the only slot I could get for you. Um, can you, can you slack me your meeting schedule once you know it? And then I can, I can plug it into our calendars here and then I'll try to schedule some things for you around it more as I, well, as I can anyway. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can move around, and I'll, I'll send it to you. And just you, you, she, she can't even tell, tell me further in advance. That's it. It's just last. No, it's she's, like I said, you know how she is. She just came like barging into the office and said, "I, I need the studio at one. Uh, book it for me, please." And then was out in a huff like usual. Okay. Well. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. No, no problem. You know, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm rooting for you. I, I know this isn't like the greatest gig in the universe, but 
I'm I'm glad you've got it at least. I think you're gonna do great. Yeah, I'm 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 glad I I got it too. Thanks. Mm-hmm. How are things going at school, by the way? Are are you doing okay so far? Are you making friends? Um I mean it's it's fine. I'll just you know, I need to focus on the career and that's what the idol club is for. Anyway, if I could just find this stupid Yes, yes, I won't keep you much longer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, shoot. I think I gotta run here anyway. It looks like uh, I just got a notification that says Mary just ordered one of those one of those ridiculous unicorn fraps. Again, I gotta go run and pick that up. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Grace, Sorry. just yeah. good luck. <laughs> Thanks. I'll talk to you later, Valerie. You got this, okay? You too. You got the unicorn frap, whatever. I got the un- I will get the unicorn frap. <laughs> oh. Okay, bye. All right, they hang up. <laughs> anyway, so um, with that out of the way, uh, you're free to continue searching the, the aisles of the auditorium. Is there anything else you're doing or are you just going straight back to it? Yeah, I'm just going straight back to it row by row. All right. Well, you don't have to go very far, at least. You you really only went through like the first row and a half. And uh, sure enough, by the end of the second row, you find on the underside of a seat a familiar piece of inkjet printed paper uh that looks like half of the school building and it's on the underside of seat 2b uh, i can't well i am pretty sure i can't do anything with this on its own so i'm gonna take that and go to the gym where everyone else said right. they were going <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah, no, there doesn't seem to be anything else really of note in here, so you might as well. All right, so we have Valerie heading back into towards the gymnasium. I'm going to say uh, you get there probably about the... Maybe just as the rest of the group is starting to leave and move on and decide where they're going to go next. Uh, we have uh, Diana, who was being a little confrontational with you before, looking even more frustrated, like... What the what the heck is this even? Like this doesn't tell us anything. What this is this is very unprofessional. I'm not having a good time. I feel like your expectations are a bit high here. They should be high. Have you seen the competition on the high school circuit? It's insane. Yeah, no. And she she just kind of like gives like an exasperated like ah with her with her arms. Maybe figure out what the point of the exercise is first after we do it, because not everything is practice. I don't see what there would be to have other than practice. Like, so much of being an idol is about skill, and nobody gives that enough credit. I mean, everybody gives that enough credit. You would think. You would think. (laughs) Let's just see what the president has to say before Um, jumping to a bunch of conclusions. I'm not happy with this either, but this is our first class. I'm not sure how much practicing you were expecting us to do. (sighs) It's it's just very frustrating. It's so hard to win these competitions. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. We all have. We'll figure it out. Uh, hey. All right, so so yeah, Valerie, you come in kind of in the middle of this exchange. uh, Hey, so I kind of found this in the auditorium i don't know do you do you see another one of these and i i hold up the half um, of the map i hold up the other the other part of the map and be like we found this in the balls in the uh, <laughs> on a football in the equipment room and, and everybody gives a little titter because high school students love jokes about balls <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was going for <laughs> um anyway um, i think, I think yeah. valerie just kind of Smirks and nice. Uh, I mean, I just uh, thought. Well, while we were walking here, I thought that you know it had a lot of seats in the in the auditorium, and I found this so I so I could bring it back. And and Emily goes, "Oh yeah, that makes sense. The clue said something about performance too, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. it did. And now we have uh, two done. Good thinking. <laughs> Guess so. So what's our what's our last clue then? She she sort of like peeks over your shoulder to see what the last thing on the clipboard is. Uh, and remember, on the road to becoming an idol, it's always okay to ask for help. So either a road or maybe the guidance counselor's office? Uh, are the two guys still there, like, practicing basketball? Oh yeah, they're they're just, they're best broing it up. <laughs> they're high-fiving each other, like, nice one, bro. 
<laughs> Every time I, one of them sinks I, a basket. I hold up my half of the map and go, Hey, it, any of you know what this is? What? And then they, they, they stop to turn around like, what? What's? Oh, girls! Hey, hi! <laughs> and they, they, they sort of like make your way, make their way over like they hadn't even noticed any of you walk back and forth across the, <laughs> the gym, even with the very loud <laughs> heels clacking on the floor. They're just very. They love basketball so much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they they come over to, to say like, hey, yeah, sure. What's what's up? What do you what do you what do you got? What? Do you... Well, we're we're trying to follow this weird scavenger hunt, and it said to ask for help, and I thought you might be the people we're supposed to ask for help. Oh, I, I don't know anything about that, but I don't know. Helping seems cool. <laughs> they seem as confused as you. Okay, I immediately pretend they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, what a waste. Well, it's, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe we could help you find the person who's supposed to help you. They seem very, like, <laughs> they seem like they don't want to give up the chance to talk to some pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's try and put these images together. Angie's just ignoring them. Let's try and put these pictures together and see if maybe it would lead us to another location or there's something that signifies on it. There's a. It looks like there's a piece missing on mine. Yeah, well, as you put the two pieces of paper together, you see they form a near complete picture of the school building, except the 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 top part seems to be cut off, like somebody like ripped the top of the page off. Hmm. On the road to becoming an idol, it's always okay to ask for help. Maybe the library? And the <laughs> and the guys recoil at that like, ew, books. <laughs> I I look over at uh, at Cynthia and kind of shrug like, eh, maybe. I just keep looking at road. I don't know. Yeah. And it says to ask for help, but you shouldn't talk in the library. And Karen nods sagely. Mm, that's wise advice. <laughs> Uh, and em- Emily pipes up with like I, I, I don't know. Maybe the guidance counselor sounds like a decent idea. Like their their whole thing is guiding, helping, guiding. Yeah, I guess we could use some guidance. Unless like they would have put the last piece of paper on a road somewhere. I don't know. Hmm. I'm all for checking the counselor's office. All right. So you guys are gonna head to the. I guess basically to the the staff office, which is where all that would be. Yeah, that's our. I guess that's what we got right now. Yeah, and you're fairly close to there anyway. So, so you all head out of the gym and down the short hallway towards the the front of the school where the office is. Uh, and there in the front office, you see a, a guy in his maybe like late thirties, early forties. He seems fairly nondescript, but nice and like you you know who this guy is if you've been here before. This is uh, this is Mr. Pollock. He's just the, the office admin who runs the desk here. And he smiles when he sees you all come in like, oh, what can I help you with, ladies? Hi, Mr. Pollock. I'm definitely a teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are, I, and he sees the, the, the clipboard and the pieces of paper in your hand like, oh, hey, uh, are you, you guys aren't doing the idol club thing, are you? Oh my god, yeah! Hey! Yeah. And he gives you the, like, finger guns like he's like he thinks he's cool. Yeah. Um, I play along because I'm in it to win it, and I need to find that last missing piece. <laughs> so. Uh, I'd like to say, I think Valerie has probably talked to the counselor quite a bit, just because that's, you know, someone that you would, like, talk to about, uh, you know, a uh, uh, transition. Hmm. And but right now she's just like not acknowledging him or the fact that she's ever met him before in her life. Uh, and I think I think he's aware enough to know that he probably shouldn't like be like overly familiar. Like, like okay. he, he's not going to yeah. make you like very uncomfortable. Like when you obviously don't want to be like approached. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to to mention that that's the 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 attitude she has here. Oh yeah, that's fair. Uh, anyway, so we have. Angie being very, like, nice and familiar with Mr. Pollock, and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, you, you, hey, congratulations, I guess this is where you, uh, you get the thing for your scavenger hunt that, uh, that Amberly set up. I can't believe this actually worked. I mean, thank you, Mr. P. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> Diana, like, just smacks her forehead, like, God, 
<laughs> uh, so he he r- rustles around with some papers on the desk and pulls out a, a little envelope that's marked New Idol Club members. <laughs> um, and he also pulls out that his says. own clipboard that actually does say Idol Club signups because this is the administration <laughs> office and you have to like actually formally sign up for clubs and this is the place you should do that. <laughs> Okay, I, like, reluctantly put the clipboard down (laughs) and keep my pom-pom pen and just fill out the form. All right. I say nothing. So (laughs) I'm going to say he... I'm I'm actually going to say Mr. Pollock hands the envelope to Cynthia because he also uh, actually does look at Cynthia and says, Oh, hey, uh, Cynthia, right? Miss Knight? Yes. Your aunt stopped by earlier. I think she's waiting for you outside. Uh, once you're done with all this, you might want to go and talk to her for, for... I think she said she just needs to talk to you for a bit. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you know that you have your your aunt waiting somewhere outside the school. Yes. All right. So you have the envelope, so... Yeah, I'll open up the envelope. All right. So you open the envelope, and in there you find one more familiar-looking piece of inkjet-printed paper... And you line it up with the the pictures you already have, and what you see is basically just a photo of the school with sky above, and there's a big yellow arrow pointing to the roof. <laughs> so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dana Lexa as Valerie Pierce, Tia Wind as Evangeline Blake, Michelle as Cynthia Knight, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad. This song and all other music for this episode are royalty-free tracks under license from audioblocks.com. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. Thank you again for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time!